right, let's continue with our example 157 by now constructing this confidence interval for the treatment A. So the notation here says xt, right? But they want x bar t, bar to me. That means the sample mean for treatment A, in this case, since we're doing it for treatment A. And then we need the standard deviation, which is defined as the square root of MSE. Now, MSE is here, the mean square for error. We just take the square root of that to get our S. N is the number of repetitions for the treatment, right? So what they mean here is that uh, when you talk about this NT, actually, it should be NT is the number of rep repetitions for the treatment. In other words, we have four here. So that's what NT should be. There's a subscript that's missing for that statement. And then finally, uh, the degrees of freedom for the T that we have to come up with, the T alpha divided by two, we're gonna use N minus K. N is the total number of values here. We have four, 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 that's 16. If you take away K, which is four treatments, the number of four treatments, you end up with 12. That's the same as the error degrees of freedom. So uh, all you have to remember for the T alpha divided by two, it has the same degrees of freedom as the error in the ANOVA table. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this work using the confidence interval technique that we've learned before. I'm gonna move this away. We don't need the formula anymore. Normally with the confidence interval, we write down the data first, right? So let's do the data step. The data step is just gonna be NT, in other words, in this case, NA, right? For us, because we're dealing with treatment A. How many values were in the A row? There were four values. Then we need the sample mean for A the treatment sample mean, what's the sample mean for A? Well, we have the four values, let's just figure out the mean by dividing those, or sum those four values and divide by four. So 3.7 plus 3.6 plus 3.5 plus 3.5. I add them together and I divide by four and I come up with the answer 3.575, 3.575. Okay, so now that we have our mean, our next step is going to be to come up with our standard deviation, right? Now our standard deviation is just the square root of MSE. So in this case, it's going to be the square root of this number in our table, MSE. That's 0.446. And then after taking the square root, let's see what we get. So if I do 0.446 raised to the 0.5 power, I get the answer 0 0.66783. Let's use five decimal places to keep as much accuracy as possible. Now we need an alpha. It doesn't say what alpha to use in the problem, so we'll use a default 5%. That's kind of the classic alpha level. All right, next step is to get our critical value, right? Our critical value is T alpha divided by two. Now in this case, we need degrees of freedom, so let's write it out. Alpha divided by two here would be 0 0.025. And remember, degrees of freedom, we're gonna just take the error degrees of freedom. That's the same number as we have for this N minus K, right? So the number of values here minus the number of treatments, we get 12. All right, let's go to our table and look that up now, and we'll have our critical value for our confidence interval. Because so we're looking in the 0 0.025 column and down to 12 degrees of freedom. So when we do that, we find the answer 2.179. Okay, so we found the answer 2.179. That's our critical T value from the T table. Now we're gonna take that value and we're gonna plug it into our confidence interval formula for the margin of error. So the margin of error, remember, is just the piece that we're gonna add and subtract to the mean. So when you look at the formula, we have T alpha divided by two, then we have S times the square root of one over NA in our case, right? NT, it says in the formula, but NA, A is our treatment that we're doing the interval for. Okay, so when we do that, we're gonna have 2.179 times S. S was 0.66783. And then lastly, we'll divide by the square root of 1 fourth. Square root of 0.25, okay. Let's put all that in our calculator then. So we'll have 2.179 times 0.66783 times the square root of one divided by four. You could also put, of course, 0.25. I wanted to use the fraction in case later on you with a fraction you're not familiar with. All right, so you end up with the answer 0.728 roughly, right? So let's say the E is approximately 0.728. All right, so that should be good enough. You can carry an extra decimal place if you want. I'm just gonna use 728. In fact, really, I'm gonna store it in my calculator and just use the full thing, but um, for paper, I'll write it down as 0.728.
Okay, and then finally, our last step, we're going to take the sample mean and add and subtract this error from it. So we have x bar minus e, x bar plus e normally. The only difference here is it's x bar a, x bar a, right? Okay, so x bar a is 3.575 minus 0.728 and then 3.575 plus 0.728. Let's see what we get when we do that. So 3.575 minus our error, and then the same thing plus our error. And when you're done, you get the answer. 2.847 up to 4.303. Okay, so that's our solution. And so what are we saying here? We're 95% confident that we are 95% confident the true mean yield, right? Because this is a yield that we're talking about, a corn yield, right? Yield for treatment A. Is between 2.847 and 4.303. Of course, we don't know what that is. It could be pounds of corn or you know kilograms of corn. I don't know. You know, it depends on how they're defining this. It could be you know tons of corn for all we know. I don't know what the units are that weren't given in the problem, but there it is. That's our interval. We have our interval. The confidence level is 95%. So we're 95% confident that the true mean yield for the treatment A is between these two values. And we believe that's the highest that we had in our experiment. And that's it.